Supervisor, we have a bit of an issue. Oh, what's the matter, intern? Are we not shelling out enough reskins yet? Don't worry, I've got six more reskins in the works. No, uh, actually, people are starting to catch on to the fact that we're kind of been really cheaping out on a lot of the stuff that we're doing. And the only thing that we've actually made that's worth buying in a while is that thing in the Rival series. Oh, so I... Wait, wait, what? You? They're actually starting to catch on to what we're doing? That's not good. Yeah, and I think we should actually try and make something original this time instead of just reskinning the thing that we made five years ago again and again until somebody finally... No, 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 no. I, I want you to make something really good and original that'll blow everybody's socks off so that people stop thinking about this. To, I, I'm giving you 10 minutes to make it. Go, go now. Don't waste any time. Go, go! <laughs> okay, I'm going, I'm going. I'm gonna go start building now. <laughs> okay, supervisor. I spent 10 minutes, and I came out with this thing. I call it the Prometheus. It's basically the nemesis, except it's even bigger. Uh, what the? Intern? This is too good! How much are you charging for this? Oh, don't worry. I'm charging $200 for it, and I also put the grip on top just to irritate some people. <sighs> okay, it's just making sure we're not getting too ahead of ourselves here. We don't want a new standard coming up. Okay, I'll package this thing up and start selling it as soon as possible. Okay, so the Rival Prometheus gets a lot of slack just because of the gripping on top of the blaster, but I seriously think this is one of the greatest blasters ever made. And like my incoherent intro stated, it literally took the Nemesis and made everything about it even bigger, even faster, even better, and even more expensive. I literally don't even call it the Prometheus. I call this Overkill, because that's what it does. If you have this on the battlefield, you've already won the game! So with that said, I really want to review this, but first, let's get rid of all this extra stuff because it gets kind of terrifying having all of it at the same place. Ah yes, much sillier looking. Also, you can kind of see right here, there's a bit of battle damage from the stairs test. I actually don't think that came from the stairs test. I don't know where that came from. So y'all might be looking at this and saying, well, that actually looks kind of familiar. It's because this is basically exactly the same thing as what's on the Nemesis. The only difference is this is where the Nemesis' stock and grip would be. Instead, that's been moved up. And, and, and it's right up there. There is no stock. Instead, there's a sling attachment point and the hopper. Whoa, big chungus. This hopper is gigantic. And I genuinely mean that. This thing is so much bigger in person than it looks on camera. I cannot stress that enough. The hopper is very large and the way that it goes in is actually pretty self-explanatory, but I'm not gonna put it in yet. I wanna show how this blaster works. It basically works exactly the same way as the Nemesis. You have this sort of, this sort of feeding thing right here, this thing, this agitator, and then a conveyor belt, which pushes it forwards into the flywheels. And I don't know what kind of cage that is, so anybody who's looking to modify blasters, you're gonna have to look that up separately. But yeah, it's literally the same thing as what's on a Nemesis, it's just in a different form factor. So now you might be asking, Okay, well if that's the case, and why is it $200? It seems like they're just being greedy. Oh, trust me, they're not. <laughs> is the rechargeable battery it comes with. It's huge. It looks a lot like those really big cans of Coke that you get at the dollar store, but it's not, it's not a dollar store. It's more like a convenience store and they're oversized. That's what this reminds me of, but it's about five times heavier and it's even bigger. Like it's so big and heavy that it doesn't even fit inside of the blaster. You literally slide it on back here and it clicks into place, and then you have to screw it in with one screw from the back. I gotta go get the screwdriver now. But once the battery's in, it's in very securely. Charging it takes the whole day. Be prepared to wait a while after you get this blaster because you gotta charge that thing. Putting the hopper in is actually pretty simple, and once you get that out of the way and lock it, we can talk about the design. This thing doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before, unless you count a nuclear bomb launcher. That's what this reminds me of. And it is literally like the coolest display blaster I have. It literally looks amazing sitting on a shelf and that's why I gave it a dedicated shelf in the first place. This is a blaster you display with pride. However, here's the funny thing. In the detail market, it simultaneously has a lot of details and almost none. So what I mean by that is if you flip it on its side, you can see most of the shell details come from these ridges. The ridges are seen here, there, right here, on this part, and up here, and on the muzzle. 
and even up here, there's little ridges there, but that's basically all the detail other than these little bolt things that are going around some of the different parts of the shell. So if you did want to paint this, you do have plenty of real estate to add your own details or just work with the ones that are built in. I think it's just the right amount of detail to get the point across, but not too much that it becomes overkill, which is ironic because that's what I've named this blaster. And yes, it literally has feet so that you can set it down on a table. And uh, for the one dingus who's asking, you have three sling attachment points, one here and then two upwards at the front. Now it's time for the controversial part. Let's talk about the ergonomics. Um, so, uh, hmm, it uh, doesn't look too promising out of the gate. And what I think is the funniest part is they didn't just do this once, they did it twice. They did it on the Titan CS50, and it's arguable whether or not the Prometheus does it better or the Titan CS50 does it better, but in my eyes, the Prometheus does it so many times better than the Titan CS50, it's not even a funny competition. If we actually take a good look at the Prometheus grip, you can see this basically just this really big handle with lots of fillets and this sort of grainy texture so that you can get a good handhold on it with all the trigger controls and stuff right up at the top where your thumb and index finger are gonna be. On top of that, the safety is ambidextrous and can be very easily reached from either side, whether you are left or right-handed. Look at this, easy, easy, easy. And essentially, to make it active, you push it down. To safety it, you push it up. Simple as can possibly be. And operating this blaster is actually way more user-friendly than you would think. You safety it, and then with your index finger, you pull this down, which actually causes the flywheels to rev. It is a top-mounted trigger, but it actually works very well. The trigger is very big, so there's no issues with it, and uh, that's an indicator light. And I'll tell you what the indicator light is for in a moment, but essentially, you pull that down, oh, you pull that down, and then you have this analog thumb trigger. Yes! analog thumb trigger. Now you don't know how badly I would love to say that this is an adjustable rate of fire, but it isn't. Essentially, you start revving and then when you reach a certain point pushing it down, the conveyor belt starts to spin. However, I seriously think it wouldn't be too hard to make that an actual functional analog thumb trigger and get an adjustable rate of fire out of that. That is a big deal, a very big one. As for that indicator light that I was talking about earlier, this turns off after two minutes, so no, it's not gonna kill your battery, but it is actually a battery indicator. When it's green, you're good. When it's red, you had better start charging it because this thing completely disables when the battery gets too low, which is actually a very good thing because this type of battery is very very dangerous. It's not a lipo. I, I wish it was a lipo. If I can flip it over to figure out what it's called, because I can't pronounce this name. That's what the battery is, which essentially means from what I know that if it goes completely dead, bam, fire hazard. And so this thing essentially has a built-in safety precaution to keep it from completely going dead, or at least give you a lot of time in between when the, when the blaster disables and when the battery completely dies. So good on you, Hasbro. That's very important. Uh, I've completely gotten off topic. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is this grip is very comfortable and the foregrip is also very comfortable. It's, it's just this round cylinder thing that spins, uh, spin. And it's supposed to be removable, but it isn't. I, I push this down, it does not. That's the second time now that I've accidentally contradicted myself in a review. God, I need to test these blasters more. Oh, uh, also this blaster came with a sling. Please use the sling, please. I lost mine. So I'm just gonna use the sling that came with the Titan CS50 to show how you hold it. So this is a new camera angle, and this is essentially how you're supposed to run this thing, because you're not really supposed to hold it from the top. But I have to say something 100% honest. This is not the perfect primary, but I think it's the perfect secondary, because it's very easy to sling this thing on your back. It's not too heavy, especially because the battery's rechargeable, you're not using alkaline batteries. So it wouldn't be too hard to run them around the field with this, at least like if it's like something like this where it's not completely sticking out on the side. And then when the time comes, the smashing commences. And I gotta say, just walking around the battlefield, putting down lanes and lanes of rival rounds is so satisfying.
and way too much fun. You know what that means? It's time for the firing test. Toby. Look at all this work I have to do now. Try <laughs> a different angle. I'm glad I did that, because the battery just died. So, um, let's cut to my opinion. Uh, this blaster is, um, a little bit fun, if you guys couldn't tell by the firing demo. I genuinely have more fun playing with this thing than every single one of my other blasters combined. This thing is just so, it's, it's so, so, gosh. Like, there's seriously no truly going over just how excessively fun this thing is. Like, it, there's nothing I can compare this to. There really isn't anything. I mean, maybe the Out of Darts Jupiter with the proton pack attached to it could maybe be compared to this, but even then, you're not wielding this giant mass on your hip like it's a briefcase of total domination. I, I can't go over it. I really can't. This is something you have to experience in person to understand what I'm talking about. It's like, I'm just being honest, like, I cannot express through words how cool of a blaster the Prometheus is. You have to have first-hand experience with this to really take my word for it and be like, oh my goodness, yeah, this thing is legit. But if you don't have the ability to get a Prometheus at the time, hey look, it's me. Or you're trying to save up for one in the future, but you need a reference point, my opinion on this is that this is, quite frankly, the funnest blaster that they've ever released. This is the funnest blaster Hasbro has ever released. It's also the most expensive, so take that with a grain of salt. If you're not really ready to spend $200 on something like this, the Nemesis might be a better option. It's basically the same, it's just, it's half the price and it shoots slower. Pretty much the only difference is. Um, yeah, I pretty much run out of words. If you really, if you want this thing, please get it. You're not going to be disappointed. But with everything I've said, if you would like to pick up a rival Prometheus, I will link one in the description below. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed, and comment down below what do you think of this blaster or any blasters you'd like me to review in the future, and I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>